Uh, we go on to our last speaker, Dr. Sandeep. Would you call him the might of Andhra? Because I've seen him uh, do a wonderful job, both of his anterior segment and posterior segment surgeries. So let's see what he has to share in the next few minutes. On to you, Sandeep. Good evening, everybody. Uh, thank you, Chitra, ma'am, for giving me this opportunity. Uh, I'll be sharing uh, 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 my uh, ideas of doing uh, take home specification hard eyes. Uh, Dr. Uh, so, uh, hard eyes, you can cla uh, class, uh, uh, classify them as pre existing high IOP cases, um, which are pre existing or intraoperative sudden rise of high IOP. See, pre existing high IOP, as you all know, it can be picolytic or picomorphic. And sometimes short eyes or uh, sudden retrobulbar hemorrhage that can develop can cause. A pre existing high IOP or sudden uh, rise of IOP in cases of supracordial bleeds or sudden hydration of vitreous through the zonules. I'll show you some of the videos where this uh, uh, thing has happened to me and how we manage that uh, during the cataract surgery. So, this is a case uh, of this a very short eye where the eye power was around 28 uh, uh, diameters. I started uh, doing uh, the rexus, I was putting in visco, and all of a sudden the eye ball was very hard and the iris started collapsing out. You can see, uh, I tried to maneuver uh, and try to put the iris inside, but could not come. And what I did is I made a, a 23 gauge parse planner uh, stab incision and did a mild uh, dry vitrectomy. Once I did that, you can see uh, I could uh, manage the case uh, as a regular case. And I can go ahead with uh, doing the uh, surgery. So this, this instance had actually, uh, I, what I have observed is when I was using a certain uh, uh, viscoelastic, HPMC viscoelastic from a certain company, I regularly used to encounter this kind of uh, uh, positive pressure. So what I have realized is the viscoelastic that I was injecting sometimes can get through these annuals into the vitreous and sudden uh, hydration of the vitreous because of viscoelastic can happen and cause a sudden rise of uh, uh, IOP. So in this instance, the time I have entered and injected viscoelastic, just before doing the rexus, I had the uh, positive pressure. And by doing a simple dry vitrectomy, minimal dry vitrectomy, not too much. If you try to do too much of vitrectomy, what will happen is the posterior, uh, the entire uh, vitreous would collapse and you might have a, a nucleus drop. So this patient, finally, I, I could uh, implant a multifocal eye oil at the end of the surgery. If at all, if this dry vitrectomy was not done, I don't think I could complete the uh, surgery. And this is one more instance where I finished the entire surgery. And you can see I was doing an anti capsule polishing. I was about to uh, put in the uh, eye oil in uh, under the viscoelastic. When I was actually in, uh, putting this eye oil, you can see the eye oil actually got stuck in the uh, uh, in the port and the, the uh, in the positive, there is sudden increase in positive pressure. I inject some of the viscoelastic pipe to form the chamber. Still, I could not move the uh, eye oil. The first thing that came to my mind is relax the speculum so that the positive pressure on the eye ball might uh, come down a little. So I did that. You can see that I, I, did, I reduced, I uh, loosened my speculum, but still I could not make any uh, movement. The, uh, the lens does not go into the bag at all. So at this point of time, what you get is I put in a 23 gauge uh, trocar cannula. And again, I did a, a minimal dry vitrectomy, make the eyeball a little softer. Once we do that, you can see the entire uh, the eyeball, you can see the eyeball is getting soft. And then uh, dive in the uh, eyeball. It, uh, normally, if I'm doing this uh, at the beginning of the uh, nucleus management, I don't recommend to make the eyeball too soft so that you know if that happens, it can cause uh, sudden. Uh, and yeah, I mean you can you can have a nucleus drops. And this is a case, a third case where this patient was having an IOP of 54 millimeters of mercury for more than 15 days. You can see this is a trichomorphic glaucoma with uh, glaucoma plaquettes. So, uh, so what I was planned with, I was like I, I planned for a complete vitrectomy followed by uh, cataract surgery. And if the pressures don't come down, I was planning to do a uh, surgery for the future. So that was the plan of the surgery. So uh, I did a complete uh, three, uh, three port uh, pass plan of vitrectomy. I did a complete PVD in the induction, complete uh, vitrectomy. And followed by FECO uh, surgery, you can see I could not form the uh, anterior chamber, just uh, uh, aspirate some of the fluid from the anterior chamber and uh, go ahead with the uh, FECO surgery. 
and the inclusion that i maintain is about 5 mm of water of inclusion i maintain so i was uh, uh, the inclusion that the, the, uh, from the past planner i still maintain about 5 mm of mercury of inclusion and then go ahead with the fecco surgery if at all we don't maintain that pressure you might have a sudden collapse and the entire nucleus might dislocate so once we do that you can see uh, i mean the surgery becomes very easy uh, place the lens and make sure at the end of the surgery you also um, remove the anterior hyoid as well as the posterior capsule so that the entire eyeball becomes a single chamber and you can see the uh, actually the, the patient did very well and he did not require any glaucoma surgery uh, after the uh, after this uh, procedure and his iop maintained at 15 16 after this even though the patient had uh, raised iop for more than 2 uh, weeks so these are the uh, tips i follow whenever i have a hard eye do a dry reflect me thank you uh, thank you dr sandeep uh, wonderful example shown very well what is your end point of uh, uh, advising us the past plana vitrectomy in these eyes um, uh, what i see is uh, you should just do a minimal vitrectomy where the eyeball is just become soft you should not get corneal folds the moment if you see too many corneal folds it is better to rehydrate the vitreous so that the the pressure in the vitreous cavity increases a little if the pressure in the vitreous cavity falls too much and when you do a hydro procedure the entire vitreous will drop you know it had happened to me a couple of times that's when i realized you should not do too much of a dry vitreous a minimal dry vitreous to me if at all if the pressure is coming to falling too uh, low when the cornea starts uh, folding in then just rehydrate the vitreous a little I think it's called uh, finger on the eye vitrectomy because you have your <laughs> finger on the eye to yeah, yeah. check the pressure to when you're doing the... the vitrectomy. That's what I do, and Makes then it. when it's kind of soft enough digitally, I feel it and then I stop. Uh, so that is one of the tips. Uh, the other thing is in the second case, why why didn't you give uh, intraop mannitol in, before doing the vitrectomy? Probably there was some amount of uh, hydration of the vitreous, and uh, I, I... the pressure increased. Yeah, no, I, I actually gave. I mean, I, I most of these cases, short eyes, it's mandatory that I give them the Dimox tablets and uh, uh, IV mantle before the surgery. Yeah. In spite of that, uh, you know, this situation had I had uh, this situation, especially when using a certain company's uh, viscous elastic. Whenever I, we, I uh, wish to the, uh, have some scientific justification on saying this uh, using a viscous elastic of a specific com company. What exactly yeah. do you mean by that? and what is the scientific uh, postulation of that so the my postulation was that this viscous elastic was too soft and you know it was going through this venous into the vitreous and the, these are the two uh, cases where i have uh, an example where you know, at the end of the surgery the three piece eye valve i was injecting till then everything was very good and this, uh, this eye valve eye valve was the third case what i saw it was not a very short eye either so once i injected viscous elastic started trying to put in the eye valve then the, i started getting a positive push very so nice thing video I... sandeep uh, but i just like to make a couple of observations i think it's not the prolapse of the iris but uh, the repositing of the iris which yes. creates a problem so as you rightly did i mean you know you, you go through the side port and reposit the iris back rather than trying to push it through the same uh, opening through which it came ah. out and i think you should resist the temptation to overfill with viscoelastic or with fluids because that's when all the prolapse occurs and uh, rather than releasing fluid from the back of the eye is what is more important and as far i also have my own concerns about the way you handled the second case do it went well in the sense that the surgery seems to have gone off well and it's right in the end that you had a hard eye i would be very wary of a coronal effusion or a hemorrhage and maybe even before putting in a vitrectomy cutter pass plan a cutter inside i would have had a indirect ophthalmoscopy done to see why is it that suddenly towards the end this is happening yes sir and uh, even in the first case uh, because the surgery had not started i would first want to see as to whether there could be just on opening the eye you could get a choroidal uh, so i would wish to first to see rather than continue with the surgery because nothing would be lost if you just suture up the patient and take the patient again on another day uh, rather than just going ahead and doing it and uh, the other thing is that often uh, even though you have taken the probe right in if you are dealing with say hypermature cataract or a mature cataract as you are talking about a phacomorphic you actually don't need to go in uh, if it is a aqueous misdirection or there is a misdirection of the fluid it will just come out once you have you even whatever is coming out 
uh, from the uh, at the point of the where you have put the trocar cannula, where the uh, cannula is, you just take it out, and uh, that itself will decompress the eye rather than actually going in and doing a core vitrectomy or breaking the hyaloid. So actually, the fluid coming out that in itself decompresses the uh, the uh, uh, the eye. And uh, as Dr. Ram said, IV mannitol is a must. Uh, if we were in US or UK, I think uh, IV estrazolamide works very, very well in these particular cases, giving it uh, right at that time on the table. So, a couple of uh, in the third, yeah, in the third case, probably at the end of the surgery, these chronic angle closure glaucomas where the pupil is dilated, end of the surgery, I would have done a pupiloplasty with SFT, yeah. and this works very well very in the long term to reduce it because it pulls the iris uh, root away from the angle. And then opens up the angle, and I think Dr. Amar Agarwal has uh, demonstrated few cases where it's worked beautifully, uh, doing an SFT and a pupiloplasty uh, for chronic angle closure. And in case the angles are very, very, uh, uh, it's very shallow, and your cornea is bad, uh, Dr. Uh, Harsh and Dr. Abhinandar in our uh, have done a couple of cases of uh, the valve. Uh, after doing a vitrectomy, they're actually putting the valve uh, posterior to the uh, IUL into the uh, uh, vitreous that has been removed, vitreous cavity that uh, you have done the vitrectomy and that, that has shown good results. Uh, this is when you have a total compromisation, a very shallow uh, anterior chamber and the cornea is bad under those circumstances and the pressure is very, very high. So that is another methodology that you can do. But that is what the plan was, sir. If at all the pressures don't come down, I was planning to do a, 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 a through the first plan into the vitreous scan. Yeah. Thanks. Actually, Sandeep, uh, all of us have commented too much, but all your cases were very good. Yeah. Very nicely presented. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, sir. He's a very self-confident guy. I don't think anything is going to deter him. Anagha, do you have anything, one or two important questions from the moderate, uh, from the attendees' side? Yeah, no, no further questions, ma'am. Excellent presentations. Yeah, kudos to you, sir. Oh, I good. think Namrata is already ready for the next. Uh... Yeah. Namrata, you better remember that I'm being very obedient about the time. No, no, you are obedient because Dr. Ram is there in that session. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm saying that uh, Madam has come back all changed. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> <laughs> you are keenly watching her. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Chitra, uh, so are there any more questions on YouTube, Facebook, etc., etc.? I'm sure our attendance would be very good. And I think uh, kudos to all the participants. So let me give my conclusive remarks. It's been a very vibrant, path-breaking webinar, I'm sure. And it's my moment to express a deep tell thanks to a very impressive expert panel and very efficient and daring set of speakers with thought-provoking tips. And of course, our efficient and supportive uh, AIS admin, Mr. Kripal, his team, Mr. Sunil, who's been a very efficient webinar admin, Sai and Manjula for their uh, promptness in keeping ARC in news all the time. My terrific and strong ARC members, a heartfelt thanks to Mr. Nikhil. That was a wonderful video you showed. And for your uh, uh, support for ARC to stay afloat. And my ever patient and very encouraging attendees who drive us to perform better and better each time. Thank you, one and all of you. Thank you so much. Thanks, Thank Dr. Mahipal. Thank you. Thank you, madam. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.